praise the Amen. Lord. We want to thank the Lord for this morning. We thank the Lord. Reverend Betty, you're already with us. Allow me to quickly read uh, the portion of scripture that uh, the portion that uh, you'll be sharing from is Ephesians 6, verse 12. And in NIV, it says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Bless the Lord, Reverend Betty, you're welcome. Please take it on. Thank you very much, my sister Pam, and thank you everyone that has logged on. We praise the Lord, and we continue to surrender ourselves before the able arms of the Lord Almighty, King of kings and Lord of lords. We come to you this morning acknowledging our emptiness, acknowledging our failures and vulnerability. Lord, I acknowledge my own weaknesses. I am nothing without you. But we thank you, Lord, that you are God who forgives all our sins, the God who heals all our diseases, the God who empowers us. Lord, I submit myself under your authority and also my friends and brethren that are locked on and those that may hear later on. I ask, Lord, King of glory, that you take over from me, take over from all of us, O oh Lord. Forgive me, forgive us all, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Use me as a vessel, oh Lord, King of glory, that what you want us to learn today is what will come through my lips. Lord, I pray that indeed you sanctify me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, and fill me with your spirit, with your power, that your word will come out the way you want it, and Lord, it will accomplish your purposes. And Father, we thank you for the power and authority that you've given us over all the powers of the enemy. The Lord, even as we contend against the rulers and authorities, yes, the powers of this dark world, those in the unseen world, the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms, we thank you that you have given us power and authority over them. And so, Lord, we subdue them before your power. We bring them under the feet of Christ. The Lord, you reign supreme, King of glory, that would not be any contentions or King of glory. There would not be any negative effects upon us, even as we listen to your word and even thereafter, Lord. We pray, King of glory, that with your power, any forces in the underworld will be uprooted. Yes, those that are on the ground will be dispelled. Those that are in the heavenlies will be pulled down in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we build and plant your presence. We build and plant your power, the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than the blood of animals. And Lord, King of glory, we surrender to your Holy Spirit. We surrender to your leading. Take over my father and minister to each one of us at our points of need and may glory and honor return to you even as you continue to teach us how to wage war in the spirit of God. We give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And amen, friends, welcome. Uh, we thank the Lord for an opportunity for us once again to engage with him and with one another. Thank God for this fellowship. And I want to thank each one of you for keeping in prayer, keeping in the Lord. And I pray that we continue. And a special thanks to our youth as they stand together in this month of July for prayer and fasting. And I encourage all of us to pray soon because prayer is not a gift for a chosen few. Prayer is for all of us. Our Lord Jesus Christ says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Luke 18, verse 1, the Bible says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. We, you and me, are to pray and not give up. We are to keep in prayer, praying without ceasing. And our subject of spiritual warfare this morning is part and parcel of prayer and intercession, prayer for all children of God. Yes, some may be given special grace. Uh, as the Lord says, he gives us a spirit of prayer and supplication, but we are all called to pray. Yes, we 
make some people to be prayer warriors, but we are all in war when we talk about warfare. I believe that I am hurt. Can someone affirm? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you very much. So, spiritual warfare has been defined, has been taught and shared uh, a lot, especially this month from the very beginning. But I also want to note that it's such a huge subject that is for eternity and uh, we need to just share what is within the time that we can. Uh, it is something that has been there, but we praise the Lord that in due course, we will be free from this uh, contention. So I will just say in general terms that spiritual warfare is the universal war. Spiritual warfare is the universal war of good versus evil. Good versus evil, it is between God and Satan. It is between Christians and the world systems that are ruled by Satan. This war is the war that we fight daily. We fight against the God of this world who blinds the minds of those who do not believe in God, the Lord Almighty, as we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe in God. And so we fight that we may be able to know God, our people may know God. And I would like to just summarize spiritual warfare to be the Christian gossip of higher level of consistent prayer. The Christian concept of higher level of consistent prayer. It is a spiritual contention, it's a conflict, it's a struggle. And because it's a struggle and contention, there's fighting, there's wrestling. And we, the people of God, we wrestle against Lucifer, the fallen angel, who is also called Satan, the devil, the dragon, the Asian serpent, the father of lies or deceit, the murderer. And he has agents that he works through the evil forces, the spirits and demons that interfere in our day-to-day -day living. And uh, as our key scripture has said, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly realms. So there we are, brothers and sisters. There is war, it is constant. And so it means that we too need to engage. We are all enlisted in this warfare. We are all soldiers of the cross an army of ordinary people, but we are extraordinary because of the Lord Jesus Christ who has already overcome. And so even as we start, the encouragement is we are fighting from the victory position. We are fighting from a winning position. Our Lord has already won. And as we will see, the angels also won and the enemy Satan, Lucifer, has been defeated. He's a defeated before, but you know, like they say, he has kicks of a dying horse. He knows that his time is short, and so he wants to try to prowl around like a rolling lion looking for someone to, to devour. But praise the Lord, we are not unaware of his schemes. So you and me are victors in the Lord. We fight knowing that the Lord our God is on our side and he has already won the victory. Just like David said, the battle is not mine, it belongs to the Lord. And he was challenging the giant Philistine, Goliath, saying, you are circumcised today, the Lord will give you in my hands. I'll destroy you, I'll cut your head off. 
And so I pray and encourage us that we to build up that spiritual stamina, that encouragement to know that we are victors in the Lord. I want to just attempt to look at how did this spiritual warfare begin, just to remind ourselves, but also we'll look at what its effects are on us and on us as human beings, and then our call to fight, to fight the real enemy, not the perceived enemy, and then we will pray. So the origin of spiritual warfare, origin of spiritual warfare, we know that in the very beginning, God created everything good, and he said it was very good with the creation of human beings as affirmed in Genesis chapter one, verse 31. Genesis 1, 31, the Bible said, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. So even Lucifer, who is one of the guardian angels and is equated to the king of Tyre, is shown to be good from the very start. We'll look at Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 to 15a. Ezekiel 28, 12 to 15a, the Bible says, Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and beauty and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone adorned you, carnelian, chrysolite, and emerald, topaz, onyx, and jasper, lapis, lazuli, tokias, and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fairy stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created. That's a very good picture. Perfect in beauty, full of wisdom, seal of perfection. That is how Lucifer is defined as relates to the king of Tyre. But listen to what happens in verses 16 to 18, the problem came with Lucifer's wickedness. Verse 16 says, through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fairy stones. Your heart, became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. By your many sins and dishonesty trade, you have discredited your sanctuaries. So here is Lucifer, guardian angel. We are told he was leading worship in heaven, but he decided to compete with God. He decided that because he was in splendor, he looked beautiful, he had a lot around him commanding respect. He decided to corrupt his wisdom. So what happens in Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, Isaiah 12, 14, 15, the Bible says, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the earth. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to shell to the lowest depths of the pit. Brethren, that is 
what transpired in brief. Lucifer was a great being created by God, one of the angels, but because of his pride, because of his rebellion, every form of wickedness and sin, he was thrown down. I pray that we will take care of whatever giftings and ability God gives us. Yes, that we use whatever God has endowed us for his glory, for his honor, for his worship, and not against him. Not for us to think that we are the ones that matter. Nobody else matters. Imagine a created being competing with God and saying, I will be like the most high God. I will also sit, you know, also, that also syndrome. I also want to be like this. You remember the Israelites when they had God as their most high, as their ruler, they wanted to be like other God, uh, other nation. They say, we also want a God, so a king, so that we can be like other nations. Brethren, I pray that God will help us not to go that way because then we'll be rebelling against God and the effects are disastrous. In the same way, the rebellion is seen in heaven as the dragon was thrown down from heaven. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 12, Revelation 12, 7 to 12, the Bible says, Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And a great dragon was thrown down, that the ancient, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come for the chooser of our brothers has been thrown down who chooses them day and night before our God. And they conquered and they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony for they loved not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice O heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Yes, the devil is here with us. He's active, he's incarnate in beings and he tries all he can to draw as many people to him. We are told he drew part of the angels from heaven and they were thrown down with him. But I pray that we will not be among those that follow the devil, that follow deceit, that they follow the pride, you know, of our own eyes, the glory of the things that we see. I pray, brothers and sisters, that we will stand to know that those are the things that we have to fight against as the temptation comes, that you think you're better than maybe your boss, you even want to dethrone them. You want to decampaign them. You want to try as much as possible to be like your neighbor or even better than them. Remember that is not godly. Competition of that nature is not godly. It is devilish and it is something that we should fight against. God has blessed each one of us in our various capacities. Let's use that which God has blessed us with for his glory to help others. As we have heard, the devil has blinded those who do not believe. May we pray that people will be released from the bondage, that their eyes will be opened. As we see today, there are many that have been deceived. As we hear of a whole prime minister, I do not know what comes to mind when he thinks that he can marry a crocodile and leave, even when it was 
closed, the mouth was closed at that so-called function of wedding. What happens thereafter? We've had he ended up in hospital, but we pray, brethren, that the Lord will open the eyes of people. Let's engage in the fight, in the struggle against these evil forces. Indeed, that is a true blinding that people cannot sense that this is wrong, that this is illogical. But we pray that the Lord will release us and release all his people from all the lies and the deceit that the devil places them in. And that is the effect that we see of the devil here on earth. The scripture has clearly says that woe to you, O earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. We know how the devil deceived Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. We know how Eve in turn influenced her husband, Adam, to disobey God and they both sinned against God. And the effects are adverse since then. With them immediately, they became naked. They were ashamed. They were robbed of the fellowship with God. And consequently, they were sent away from the garden that had all the provisions that they had now to work, to toil, to be able to make provisions for themselves. Eve and all the women, we have to struggle in child birth, even in the conception itself. For some of us, it is quite challenging. I remember myself, for the first three months, I would have real chaos. You can't eat, whatever you try to eat comes through. You vomit, you spit, it's just a horrible experience. Even when I had the thoughts, of having four children and my friend thought he we would have only two, I had to easily compromise. And we ended with three because the experiences were not good. But we thank God that he gives us the victory. We know that in the very first family of Adam and Eve, their son, the first son killed his follower. And this has continued with so many struggles that we go through today. We have accusations and counter accusations in families, spouses accusing each other, hiding things from one another, struggling left and right, including the center. But I pray that God will give us the grace to know that the real enemy is not our fellow human beings, but it's the devil and his evil agents and that will be able to fight that true enemy. And so if friends, even as we engage in fighting, let's remember to fight the real enemy, not just the perceived, identify who the real enemy is, and then we will be able to fight appropriately. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Human beings are not our real foes. They are not the real enemies. They are simply agents. They are only used. I'd like to give us an example. If you are seated in a vehicle, you are dependent on the vehicle and maybe the driver or the captain, whatever the vehicle it is. So in case anyone wants to reach you, they have to stop the vehicle, have to address the vehicle and the driver. And in similar manner, even if you cut a branch on a tree, you cannot destroy the tree. You are simply helping it by trimming it to be able to be able to bear more fruit. So if we are to deal with the fruit that the tree we need to uproot it. We need to cut it from the root. Similarly, we need to bind the devil and his agents and uproot them, even as God speaks to prophet uh, Jeremiah saying, I've given you the power to uproot, to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow. 
but also to build and to plant. And so as we engage in warfare, we need to remember to bind, but also to lose. We need to remember to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, but also to build and plant. We uproot, tear down, destroy, and overthrow what is not good, but we build and plant what is good. The presence of God, the spirit of God, his divine protection. And who are these? that we are to bind, who are these that we are to destroy. The real enemies are spelled out as evil rulers or principalities in verse 12 of Ephesians 6, our key verse. Evil rulers, in some translations, they are called principalities. And these are the beings of the highest rank in Satan's kingdom. I'm not very familiar with the army, uh, the ordinary army in the physical realm, but I imagine that the highest commander is the general. So you'd say the evil rulers or the principalities are the generals. They are high up there. And the scripture is saying that these are in the unseen world. And they work together with authorities. Now, authorities, we can call them to be the second in the command. They are powerful, but because of the levels, the principalities are higher and the authorities are second in command. And so they are in the unseen world. We do not see them. So we cannot say we are going to you know, hold our fists. We are going to use pistols and all the other physical weapons. No. There are also mighty powers in this dark world. The mighty powers, we can relate them to the operations managers, you know, those that are carrying out instructions here on earth. But also the other rank is the evil spirits in heavenly places, the evil forces in the heavenly places. These are demons that they operate all over in the heavenlies, but they also have the ability to be effective on earth. And so brothers and sisters, the spiritual warfare battles that we engage in daily, we engage in daily moment by moment as children of God, and we are all enlisted as warriors. We are all supposed to be alert. 24 seven, we are in battle because the enemy prowls around. He does not rest. He is constant in his operations. And so for us to counter his operations, we too must even be more alert. We should engage as warriors. And how do we do so? The scripture gives us counsel in Ephesians 6, verse 10 and 11. Ephesians 6, 10 and 11, the Bible says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full arm of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. As we stand, we cannot fight in our own strength. We are weak and vulnerable. But thank God that we have the Lord who is most powerful. The Bible describes him as a man of war. He's a God of heaven's armies. He's a Lord of hosts. Yes, he fights all battles and he wins them. He has never lost any battle and he will never. And so with him on our side, we are more than conquerors. We are victors. Hallelujah. So be encouraged, brother, sister, whatever that contention that is upon you right now. It could be in the mind. It could be in the physical. Maybe you are struggling financially. Maybe you are struggling as a, a, a family with relationships as husband and wife, with the children. Maybe you're struggling at your workplace. Whatever it is, be encouraged. The Lord our God is mighty. So let's be strong in him. Let's put on that full armor that will be able to resist the devil. We'll be able to overcome because he has overcome. We will overcome and we are victorious over the devil, over the world, over the flesh. The spiritual weapons we use 
are guided by the spirit of God. Yes, we are on earth, but we do not wage war as we know that it's not physical, it is spiritual. So we use the spiritual weapons guided and provided by God through his Holy Spirit. I know that a lot more is going to be shared in detail about each part of the armor of God. But just to highlight for us that we picture, I love using the illustration of the body from head to toe, but also all around, knowing that God has provided for us a helmet of salvation upon our head to protect our brain, to protect our mind. Yes, without salvation, friends, you cannot engage in spiritual warfare. In case you have never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, I employ you that that is the first step for you to enlist in spiritual warfare. But also you may be there, but for some reason or the other, you are struggling. You may have slidden back. You may be lukewarm. I pray that you pick up your pieces and return to the Lord so that you are strong in his might power with the helmet of salvation upon your head. And we need to ensure that we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God in our hand. I would like that you put that in the right hand, the sword of the spirit, which is everything that we need listed there, embedded there. Yes, the manufacturer's manual. We are manufactured by God Almighty. What we need is in his manual. We need also the shield of faith. We can put it in the other hand. That yes, with the faith, we can be able to extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. We need also to put on the breastplate of righteousness in our chest, protect the heart, to protect the heart because from it come the issues of life. Let's put on the righteousness. Let's ensure that when we have challenges and struggles, temptations coming our way, let's ask the Lord to forgive us so that we can renew the righteousness. But also we need to guard our lions with a belt of truth. In the West, let's have that truth tied correctly because we know that the devil is a father of lies. He operates on deceit. We can only counter him when we have that truth but also in our feet we should guard with the shoes of the gospel peace, that readiness, the gospel, so that people can be liberated from the bondages that the enemy holds them. But also we need to pray with all kinds of prayer at all times. We also have provision of another powerful weapon that was mentioned in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, that they overcame or they conquered the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Let's learn to testify, friends, that we will be able to continue to overcome the devil. As we testify, we render him more powerless and the Lord continues to gain glory. I also want to remind us that we need to stay alert as St. Peter cautions us. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9, the Bible says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your, fam your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. We are not the first ones to face the challenges even the struggles of LGBTQ have been there in the Bible times. It's not unique. You remember Sodom and Gomorrah? The Lord destroyed them because of homosexuality. The Bible speaks a lot about so many other evils that are happening in our time that have been there. But the good news is that we are more than conquerors, that even when there was the punishment in the Garden of Eden from the very first, for the first uh, human beings, our ancestors, Adam and Eve, we praise the Lord that he promised that the seed of the woman would destroy the serpent. Thank God the seed of the woman is Jesus Christ. He gives us deliverance even when we are attacked by the evil forces. By the power of the Lord, we are victorious. 
And so friends, as I mentioned earlier, we are fighting from a point of victory. We are more than conquerors as the Bible says. And in Colossians chapter one, verse 13, Colossians 1, 13, the Bible says, God has rescued us from the power of darkness and has brought us into the kingdom of his son whom he loves. And so as we conclude and pray, I remind us friends, that the battle has already been won. The angels in heaven won and threw down the dragon. Our Lord Jesus Christ won not just on earth, but even under the earth. Scripture says that he even went down and removed the keys from Satan, from the dragon. Yes, we are more than conquerors. So we are fighting from a winning position. No need to worry. The enemy can come in like a flood, yes, but the Lord promises to lift up a standard. Sometimes we are so fearful of evil, especially witches and witchcraft and anything that is seemingly devilish. But remember that the one who is in you, who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. So let's remember to be strong in the Lord. Let's put on that full armor, not just one piece, but all so that we can stand against the attacks of the enemy. I pray that we'll keep in prayer, that we'll keep in fellowship, that we'll keep in the study of the word of God as we learn more about spiritual warfare, as we engage day by day. Take a step extra, do some fasting. If it's possible, do it at least once a week. Engage with family, engage with fellowship members, engage with members in your organization. Let's engage so that together as a church, we can be able to defeat the enemy. Yes, he knows that his time is up. He is trying so much, but we are more than conquerors. And the Bible also says those who are with us are more than those against us. So may we continue in prayer. Let me do some prayer and then I'll hand over to my sister, Pamela. May we know that spiritual warfare is really practical. We can talk about it just to help us enlighten ourselves more, but we must be practical. We must be on guard. We must keep praying. We must keep trusting the Lord as we study his word, as we hear his Holy Spirit reveal more tactics for us. Lord our God, we come to you. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you that he humbled himself at the point of death, death on the cross, the death of a criminal. Lord, we have heard that the reason why Lucifer was held down, why he was defeated, was because he was proud. Lord, we pray that you give us the mind of Christ, the mind of humility, the character of humility, oh God. I pray, my Father, that you will forgive us where we have been proud, where we have been exalting ourselves, oh God. You tell us in your word that you resist the proud, but you exalt the humble. Lord, you have also cautioned us that we need to humble ourselves so that under your might arm, you will lift us up in due time. Father, I pray that you'll have mercy upon us where we have exalted ourselves. Have mercy upon us, oh God, where we have been reluctant, oh God, where we think that we can do hit and run tactics. We pray one time and we don't pray another time. We read the Bible only and when we feel it's convenient. Lord, we know the enemy is not resting and his agents are forced. We know that there are people that have been used of the devil who will fast to do havoc. I pray, King of glory, that you build in us that spirit of fervent prayer, the supplication of God, the intercession, Jehovah, that we stand in the gap, O oh Lord, on behalf of our families, on behalf of our nation, on behalf of the church, O oh God. You know what struggles we are having, Lord, King of glory, that the enemy is hitting at us, O oh God, even climbing our leaders, O oh Heavenly Father. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will have mercy see upon us, O oh God. We repent on our own behalf and on behalf of those 
that name your name, O oh God. Have mercy upon us, O oh King of glory, that we shall engage in warfare, that we shall not play games because the enemy is not playing at all. We pray, King of glory, that we will continue to know you more and do exploits because of the strength that comes from you and will resist the devil and he will flee from us. Continue to minister to us. Continue to empower us. We give you thanks and praise. And we pray that, Lord, even as we continue in this day, may you continue to minister to each one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Over to Amen. my sister. Thank you so much, Reverend Betty. Thank you for sharing the word of God. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we bless you, we honor you, we glorify your name. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for opening and illuminating the eyes of our hearts, Father. Thank you for you, the teaching of your word, O oh Lord. We want to thank you for our minister, Reverend Betty, Lord. We pray a blessing over her, O oh Lord. We pray for the priestly portion over her as she has shared and edified us with your word, O oh Lord. We want to speak a blessing into her life and speak a blessing over her husband, Sam, and her children, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray that you will watch over them, you will protect them, you will hide them under your arms all in, under your wings, O oh Lord, where the devil will do no harm. We pray that there'll be no retaliation. Not many times as your ministers come and share, as they go through the day, the devil seeks ways to fight them. Lord, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You have reminded us that we are constantly at war that we are constantly wrestling, not physical wrestling, not as physical fights, but Lord, we are, we are at the battlefront and we are fighting and we are fighting with authorities, we are fighting with principalities, ruling spirits over different territories, over the powers of darkness. Father, we have seen that though Lucifer was created beautiful, elegant, with gold and all these precious stones, and he could walk through the fiery stones in your presence. Yet sin and iniquity was found pride because he sought to exalt himself even above the mount of God, above the starry host. And Lord, he was thrown out of heaven and with all those that rebelled. And we see the seed of rebellion even in your courts, O oh Lord. Father, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will show us in our hearts where we have rebelled. Lord, some of us at our places have even rebelled against our leaders because we think we are more born again than them, O oh Lord. Yet we know that all leadership comes from you. We have sought to upspar them, to take their places. We think that maybe we have so much more than they have and we've underlooked them and we see that was the root, O oh Lord, and that root comes from right from the heart of Lucifer, O oh Lord. Coming on earth, deceiving Eve, O oh Lord, and the deception had consequences. Many times we look at the consequences, the suffering, the what, and we're saying, why are we? But yet the root has been the deception where we've allowed our lives, ourselves to be deceived. Father, I pray that you will unveil so that we who with unveiled faces will be able to see your glory, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that you will, we will be able to daily, daily put on your word that your, your full armor, the full armor you have provided for us. Thank you for salvation. Jesus, if you didn't die on the cross, where would we be? Thank you for salvation that you've given as a gift to mankind, oh Lord, because it's not your desire that anyone should perish. Thank you for the word that you have given, those holy scripture inspired by the Holy Spirit that men, we of God were able to write down for us. Lord, this is an offensive weapon that you have given us to wage war in the kingdom of darkness. Lord, I pray that we'll keep, pick up the word 
the word, we will read it and you will plant it in and write it on the tablets of our hearts that will not sin against you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We ask for that belt of truth, that it will be tied firmly. The belt helps right. things not to fall down. It helps the clothes to fit properly and not fall down, exposing uh, our nakedness. Lord, I pray for that belt of truth, that your truth will your truth is brings light and illumination. It helps us overcome the schemes of the enemy that will be able to see them. Oh Lord and Lord, our testimony. Father, there you have availed. You've said prayer, praying all kinds of prayer, th- psalms, worship, Lord, supplications, all kinds of prayer. You have given us weapons. Lord, help us not put the weapons down or cause them to rust because of this, of not using them, oh Lord. But Lord, help us to exercise and use these weapons because you said the weapons we have are not carnal, but they are mighty in pulling down strongholds. Lord, oh, thank you for opening our eyes, oh Lord. Thank you, oh Lord. And Lord, as we go through the day, may, you, may we feed onto this word. You've given us different scriptures through Reverend Betty. Help us to reflect on them. Help us to chew on them. Help us that as we read them, Lord, the, uh, the eyes of our inner hearts will be open to see the wonderful things in your law, O oh Lord, in your statutes that are right and pure, O oh Lord. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.